Hello and welcome everybody to ICMDA webinars. I'm Dr. Peter Saunders, the Chief Executive of the International Christian Medical and Dental Association, which brings together 107 national bodies around the world representing about 60,000 Christian doctors and dentists, and I'm your host for today. And today we're privileged to have Dr. Jamila Sadakova from Kazakhstan addressing us on the subject of new nicotine nicotine addiction tools, and, I, and I'll, I'll say some more about that. So it's my real privilege to uh, introduce Dr. Jamila Sadakova today. Uh, she is a dedicated and experienced public health advocate who has been supporting the Ministry of Healthcare in Kazakhstan in promoting uh, robust tobacco control measures since 2005, so a, a long experience. And currently, she contributes to the advancement of tobacco control work as a member of the Ministry of Healthcare Advisory Board and a member of the working groups organized by the WHO, the FCTC Conference of the Parties, and the Eurasian Economic Union as well. Uh, her dream has been to end preventable deaths in Kazakhstan. And the best way to achieve this is by putting a stop to tobacco use. She's the founder and charismatic leader of the National Coalition for a Smoke-Free Kazakhstan, which advocates for the adoption and implementation of strong tobacco control measures to save lives and to improve public health. And she's had quite some success over previous years. Her first success was in helping Kazakhstan to pass the country's first smoke-free law in 2009, an achievement that nobody believed was actually possible until it happened. And she and her coalition then led the fight to pass pictorial health uh, to, uh, warnings on, on cigarette packs and a 250% sharp tobacco excise increase, which were finally passed in 2012, despite enormous pressure, as you can imagine, from the tobacco industry. And more recently, Jamila has successfully advocated for the passage of new legislation that will protect even more Kazakhstanis from tobacco. Measures in the new law include a ban on the display of all tobacco products and all point of sale, a total ban on smokeless tobacco sales and regulating novel tobacco project products, which is going to be talking about us, to us today as cigarettes with ban in public places, requiring pictorial health warnings for HTPs and hookers and increased fines for all tobacco related violations. And these interventions really work and they really save lives. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from this experience in other settings around the world because uh, tobacco is still the world's biggest killer when we look at uh, all of the deaths that happen. So, Dr. Jamila, it's just a real pleasure to have you today. We know that you have uh, been on a flight that you've flown from Kazakhstan. You're currently in, in, the, in the Philippines uh, via China. You've only just arrived an hour or so ago, and you're in the lobby of the hotel there. And uh, we're just so grateful that you've been able to make time for us to give this talk and to answer questions. So uh, welcome to ICMDA webinars, and we really look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Dr. Peter. I'm very happy to see you uh, as well. I'm very happy and very honored uh, to present the experience which I hold for the last uh, uh, 12 years and currently the recent novel product that appeared on the market to my uh, colleagues, uh, the doctors and nurses. Uh, and I believe that the doctors should be a driving force to stop the tobacco and nicotine epidemia, which actually uh, became such a huge, huge problem, which is killing 8 million people a year. And um, the new um, tools like vapes and heated tobacco product uh, is gaining more and more um, consumers and uh, people are getting more addicted uh, to this uh, terrible product. As a person who worked uh, over more than um, uh, 15 years on this field, I can see and obviously I can even physical, physically feel that tobacco and everything which is created 
with nicotine is an ideal tool to kill people. This is uh, invention uh, to make people miserable, addictive, and um, to bring them death and, and uh, big variety of diseases. And unfortunately, the new tool which was uh, created and appeared on the market like maybe five, seven years ago, like in USA, it's absolutely, it's like tsunami, uh, which can actually overflow the brains of people, the lungs of people and make them flood and die. Because um, the way it is marketed, the way it is um, popularized, uh, popularized with uh, teenagers and the way it's built uh, is absolutely evil is absolutely unhuman and um, it's like physically you can see the life with your eyes and uh, uh, you just pray to be strong enough to face this um, attack and uh, fight for the hills and fight for the people and um, um, I'm glad that I'm not alone on this field and we have uh, many stakeholders, we have many colleagues. And uh, this year, um, even WHO gave me a big award for the outstanding achievements uh, on the tobacco fight. And uh, I'm not going to stop, I will continue because uh, my country, I, I want uh, that my country to be a pioneer on uh, uh, banning vapes completely, banning them in the field. So I will start my presentation with the scope of the problem. And then uh, the topic of my presentation is new nicotine addiction tool, tools, which is created by the Goliaths in our land. Next slide. Uh, so already Peter, uh, Dr. Peter represented uh, briefly, and this is uh, the recent award which was given in uh, uh, World No Tobacco Day uh, in WHO office and UN. And the next slide. So let us see to the uh, landscape of the consumption of vapes among teenagers. The most vulnerable to this product are the kids and teenagers. Uh, and the survey of WHO, the GYTS survey, Global Youth Tobacco uh, Service shows uh, the very high rates in Europe and um, around 25% of the teenagers under the age of 15 already smoking and um, consuming the vapes. And uh, this data was presented in May and uh, a bit later in June, the WHO showed that Monaco is the country with 45% teenagers under 15 year, after 15 years uh, consume vapes. This is uh, incredible, incredible public health challenge and concern and tsunami. I, I'm, I'm just saying that this is tsunami which will overflow um, and uh, our people, our children, and will bring a lot of, a lot of damage to health, to families, um, to the future. Next slide. And not, on, uh, not only the kids, but the um, or adults also consume the vapes and uh, quite um, oftenly, and this figure is increasing, uh, especially in Europe, as you might see, the Luxembourg and Belgium is approaching like 10% and more. Uh, so um, 60, 62 countries shows a huge trend of uh, vape consumptions among adults. Next slide. The recent data which was obtained uh, on June Global um, Nicotine Forum, which happened in Geneva on 7th, 17th of June, uh, around 50 countries came. And I was very shocked with the data from United States because uh, this is the first country which actually faced this, uh, the first wave waves of 
uh, vapes, and electronic cigarettes, and you you can see how the skyrocket is like jumping to the space, the consumption of uh, British American tobacco product, the consumption of Juul and uh, Altria, and, in, in, and uh, it has the tendency to increase even more. The next slide. And um, as a result, we can see already that um, uh, American uh, um, adolescents, uh, children, uh, more than uh, 2.5 million already active users, active consumers of vapes, and uh, they smoke and vape every day. Uh, one out of four of uh, teenagers uh, use electronic cigarettes daily, not just to experiment, but daily, because they have very strong addiction to that. Most of the time they use uh, disposable uh, uh, vapes, which means they will also bring the hazard to the environment. So they smoke uh, maybe two or three days. In general, uh, the disposable vapes um, count around from 600 to 1,000 puffs, and they just throw it to the environment, polluting our environment. And of course, 85% uh, of all the uh, cigarettes, electronic cigarettes are flavored and make it very attractive. And um, the most popular brand are the puff bars and uh, wave views. Uh, and um, you can see that the whole, we, we, we will see later the whole variety of the weapon which Goliath has against our children. The next slide. And um, as um, it's uh, no wonder that Kazakhstan, we are facing this epidemic already for three years and look how they, it grows very rapidly, almost four times the rapid growth uh, for just for three years. The big waves of uh, electronic cigarettes appeared during pandemia. And we have analyzed the statistics. Just in two years, they were able to increase the market of the waves 300 times more. And this is just the figures that we analyze. There are few more items to analyze to understand what is the real, real uh, situation in the market. And I'm afraid it will. It is not 300,000 more. It is even 5,000 more. Next slide. So uh, look at that. How many tools, arsenal of baby industry uh, you, you, you can see from the vintage style, which is uh, pipes, accessories, and looking like cigars and shisha, electronic shisha, up to the very modern gadgets. Uh, looking like uh, looking like um, um, markers, like pens, uh, some other very ultra ultra modern uh, gadgets. Next slide. So all of them, you can see the whole variety, and it's all made in order to really make a, a point and focus to the children. This is ideal tool to attract children and kids to the new product, which is highly, highly addictive. It brings extremely high level of addiction. Uh, next slide. Uh, actually, I, I draw attention, your attention to the right uh, photo. This is the real photo. Look how they look on the market, mm. how they bright, uh, how they, um, I don't know, some, some of them look like cartoons. Uh, and they actually located on intention nearby chupa chups, nearby sweets, near on the level of the eyes of children, so that the children can come watch it and be attracted and ask to buy uh, this product. Next slide. So generally, we can distinguish this type of product. Uh, uh, the closed vaping system, which is uh, most of the time disposable, so it's uh, every, all in one. You can see the uh, on the right um, side, you can see uh, the 
more or less uh, similarities in this product, which has uh, chamber heating coal, nicotine cartridge, voltage control, lead indicator, and of course the rechargeable battery, because uh, this battery helps to make to heat the nicotine, to make uh, together with um, flavorings and to uh, bring the nicotine to the brain. So, and there are open vaping system, you also can um, reuse it. Uh, well, you can put more liquid, you can put more nicotine. So uh, this uh, industry produce such a huge variety of approaches and tools to make people attractive and addicted to this um, uh, product. The next slide. And uh, of course, uh, the new invention, uh, absolutely um, unhuman, uh, which make the product uh, very uh, sweet, tasty, uh, and uh, allows them the aggressive promotion. They have exotic names like mango, passion fruit, uh, apple, whatever. They have beautiful colors, very bright uh, to attract children uh, and um, thousands and thousands of flavors. In some countries, uh, they count from 8,000 flavorings up to 16,000 unique flavors, depending on the preferences of the people and kids. The next slide. And look, we can have the next slide, yeah. Uh, this is WHO data. They they showed how much flavorance is just they categorize, but inside there are many, many names and syrups of the flavorings, like candy, like nuts, uh, uh, berries, fruits, tropical fruits, dessert. Uh, for the adults, they invented like coffee or a little bit of alcohol. So they really made it so uh, so individual for any age category, for any taste of the people and children. And you can even try vape with tiramisu, uh, with some cake. And uh, you immediately, of course, with this, um, with this, I would say, package, you can be so addictive. And uh, the danger of that, that uh, the parents cannot even feel it, cannot even feel the smell of uh, uh, this uh, product. They think that the children chewing uh, gum with uh, apple taste or with mango taste, or maybe they drink any um, beverage with uh, citrus taste, but in reality, the kids and children, they actually are vaping very terrible and dangerous product. Plus, um, they really like this taste and um, uh, many children, they very much addicted. Once they try, they can, be, uh, they can increase addiction very, very quickly because as the doctors, you understand that the chemical liquid formula of nicotine uh, is already digesting in the mouth and it goes directly to brain, uh, uh, increasing the number of receptors to nicotine and make the brain very addictive. And actually the flavorings, uh, they are, uh, few investigations uh, happened, uh, showed that actually they uh, make the brain even more susceptible uh, the, the flavorings, they, they like opening the brain to this new product and uh, to make and to accelerate this addiction. The next slide. Well, uh, some industry, they are so evil, they even lie. They always lie. They lie that there are some vapes and cigarettes, electronic cigarettes without nicotine. It's not true. Um, Obviously, the minimum level of nicotine in one cartridge could be from three milligram to 36 milligram, but it's almost impossible to open every cartridge, to open every uh, device and check in laboratory how much the 
nicotine is inside. But on the package of this uh, brightly, attractively uh, uh, product, they lie that there is no nicotine. In some cases, when we ran the investigation uh, two years ago among the sellers of the vapes in Kazakhstan, they say, yes, there are some liquids without nicotine and there is a separate nicotine. We can put drops as much as the consumer want. For example, the teenager can ask, can you please put 10 drops of nicotine in my liquid so that I can use it in this open system? So this is incredible to, um, you know, the whole variety, you cannot really control it. And in Kazakhstan last, uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, our department, the sanitary department ran a survey in, of liquids for the open system, open electronic vapes. And they found out that uh, the highest level is 67.6 .6 milligram per cubic centimeter in the uh, of nicotine in the in these liquids. And uh, compare, for example, to cigarette. Cigarette, the maximum level of nicotine is 1.2. So at least 63,000, 63 times more. This vape is addictive than um, cigarettes. Next slide. More, more than uh, nicotine, of course, uh, these uh, liquids, the oil-based liquid, uh, has more than 2,000 toxicants. Uh, the John Hopkinson University, the chemistry uh, scientists, uh, they run uh, the special uh, chemical analysis and found out uh, more than 2,000 toxicants. Uh, and some of them with known health effects, for example, all the clinical aromatic hydrocarbons, this is absolutely considered genic effect. Ultra fine particles, of course, it's a damaging effect uh, for the lungs and for the environment. Uh, the organic compounds, uh, de decarbonins, metals, uh, acetaldehyde, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, acetate of vitamin E, which uh, all found almost in every every uh, um, electronic cigarette, and actually this vitamin is responsible for the Everly disease, will which I will speak later. And uh, of course, as the industry, as Gal as this uh, Galio says, oh, you are just vaping sweet water. It's not true. The do uh, children, kids they vape almost chemical bomb. It's a chemical, it's incredible chemical bomb together with nicotine. The whole body is consuming a big amount of liquid formula of the toxicants, which I just uh, showed you. Next slide. And um, so we'll, or you already know the content, but, but Look at the surface of this product. This uh, industry producing, um, e, um, okay, okay. Let, let me tell about the right photo. This is true realistic photo from my uh, small shop, product shop, food shop uh, on the um, first floor in uh, the place where I live. So they put the vapings, uh, the vapes, uh, with, together with chupa chups and chocolate and chewing gum and, and Toblerone with, uh, to make a good uh, imagine, imagination among children that it is sweet product. On the left side, you can see how the snuff industry is making and marketing their product, the snuff. This is the snuff. The blue one, the pink one, the violet, it's obviously made for children. Uh, not even 10 years, maybe five. Look at the photo of this, uh, some cartoon on the top of this product. But this is not, it's, it's a bit different. I'm just telling you that this industry, this uh, um, absolutely evil, evil uh, tools to attract children, they don't care. They just want money. They want children to be 
to come and be stick with nicotine. Focus on children and uh, new tricks of the industry. Recently uh, in June, the WHO presented the new product uh, saying, please be, be aware that this industry is promoted and uh, they are going very fast. They are developing their product and market for the kids, for really five year old kids. Look at the sea bar, this is the puff. The, the pink uh, tiger is, uh, you know, is, is made in, not for 10 year uh, children, it's made for maybe five to six year uh, children. They also, of course, made the vapes as a lipstick, as a pen. And recently I was so shocked to see, look, you think that it's a rope for hoodie? No, it's a new design of vapes. And it is created for teenagers to sit on their lessons and to vape just inside the classroom. And the, uh, the advertisement of this type of vapes uh, is like that, that um, uh, uh, feel yourself free uh, to be yourself, to vape, even in the, in the school, in, in, during the classroom. So these are the tricks that uh, the industry is using to attract new army of consumers. They don't care um, how old is their consumers, even five years old, six years old, or 15 years old. They have all variety, all the attractive uh, approaches to make them attracted to the nicotine and to this product. So what are the health concerns? Of course, as doctors, we, we should be very, very aware that the nicotine, of course, is a, obviously it's addiction, which brings the uh, hazard to the brain. Uh, and uh, with nicotine, the whole toxicants are coming to the body, poisoning the body and uh, making it uh, too much damage to the brain. And uh, uh, with the new product, uh, the country registered the dual and poorly users. So the children start with vapes and then they are switching to cigarettes. So they are doing together vapes and cigarettes. The adults having vapes and uh, shisha or vapes, and uh, snap. So we have poorly used, and the industry created uh, this tool really to make people come back to cigarette because cigarette is the most cheap production for them and most beneficial. And currently, uh, our doctors and uh, pulmonologists that they uh, they say that. Uh, Oh, they have uh, poorly use uh, of uh, the product. Of course, uh, the health effect, uh, the, the first uh, organ is the lung, which actually takes all the hazard from the waves, uh, the cardiovascular system, um, and uh, in some cases, there are deaths happened within two uh, two or three years, like it uh, it was registered in the United States in, in, in Israel already. So, and of course, uh, um, as a doctor, you realize uh, how the all forms of this um, oil-based toxicants, it's like a mixture of these toxicants is digesting in the mouth going directly to brain and going to blood. And it, the blood is bringing all these toxicants to every every organ. And this, it's not, uh, nowadays not very clear because we have to investigate, we have to run longitudinal studies, we have to run uh, special design uh, uh, research and survey investigation in order to see the health effect but uh, it can happen that within two years, these people can die of all these toxicants which are coming to their body. Uh, the next slide. And of course, the obvious trauma, traumatizing of the vapes, because uh, the vapes can be uh, burnt 
inside the mouth. And it's a real case. You can see that uh, some people already um, losing their tools, losing their pieces of uh, bones uh, when they vape and the battery is just uh, blowing inside. Uh, so it brings uh, the physical damage uh, to the people and uh, it brings its highly traumatized um, product. The next slide. Uh, already in our region, uh, the first case of Everly there, it's a short version, Everly is American uh, pulmonologist proposed this diagnosis means electronic cigarettes of vaping product use associated lung injury. And uh, they um, proposed this diagnosis when the first peak of death happened three years ago during pandemia 2020 when around 70 uh, young people under the age of 32 died. And these deaths was very, very similar to each other. And uh, they were all vapors. And uh, on the photo, you can see how the lungs kind of stink. Uh, that these lungs or the um, change in the X-ray, uh, picture showing that all these white um, areas is the uh, oil, is the oil uh, with the toxicants uh, inside the lungs. And this is exactly why uh, the people, the young people are dying because lungs are not uh, created for the oil or for the water. Lungs are created for oxygen uh, to breathe and not and not to be uh, put with water or with oil. And uh, this is the photo from Russia in um, 2020, uh, it, when it was the first time the doctor from Russia, from the post-Soviet region, uh, openly says on, on Telegram that actually we have the first case of Everly. I've seen it in, with my eyes. And this uh, boy, he, uh, this lady is 26 years old and uh, she is disabled because she cannot breathe. And already, for example, in Kazakhstan, we already have three cases of Everly, and uh, all of them are boys under the age of 26 uh, who are active vape users in the past, but their lungs has a similar, uh, similar picture. So that's... Um, uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, if we have a pulmonologist in this uh, chat, maybe you can see this kind of uh, picture uh, for recent days. And uh, there, it was also one uh, study saying that the, um, they were running studies uh, showing uh, how much DNA is suffering from different types of vapes and cigarettes. So they had... Um, compared the DNA from the mouth uh, of non-smokers, smokers of cigarettes and uh, uh, vapors, and uh, found out that uh, uh, the DNA is 2.6 times more damaged uh, with uh, among vapors and compared to uh, uh, cigarette users, which is 2.2. So, is what we have now, and uh, but more and more studies um, appeared, and uh, I will not uh, uh, go through every study, but I will leave this presentation so you can read the PubMed articles, effects on brain, effects uh, on um, cardiovascular disease, on uh, double, uh, dual use, uh, uh, and you can list uh, can you list? Um, next slide. Yes. So you can you can see the articles, the effects on brain. The next slide. You can read. You can find out uh, the dual use and risk of smoking. Uh, double risk of um, those which uh, who waves. The next slide. 
the cardiovascular effect. You can see uh, the articles, uh, uh, the data more and more appeared with time because it's a new product. So we don't have too much data, but already the data appeared. The next slide. So effects on lung, of course, uh, you, you can see uh, in practice and you can read. And uh, the big question, does it help uh, to uh, quit smoking or not? For example, currently uh, this Goliath is using UK experience, mostly England experience saying that um, vapes are, um, it's kind, it can be treated as a cessation uh, tool. And uh, in June meeting, uh, global meeting, uh, anti-nicotine forum where around 50 people of 50 countries came, the representatives from the Department of Health, from England, from uh, actually Cochrane also, they presented, uh, I would say, studies that uh, the babes are helping to quit smoking. But uh, they were under huge attack from the exper experts from other countries, from Scotland, uh, Scottish um, doctors saying actually that uh, they don't understand how, how the obvious damage, the obvious harm can be reformated in England uh, saying that this is a tool to quit smoking. And when I ask uh, this uh, person uh, I, um, the question that um, around 8% of teenagers under the age of 15 years old, they vape, it's quite a lot figure. And I ask him how he perceived this as a problem, as a public health problem or as a cessation experiment, uh, cessation of what? Uh, so he was not able to respond to this question uh, because obviously 8% um, of children who vapes, who starting their exper experimenting with nicotine is not cessation, it's experiment and it should be a public health concern. So uh, obviously the most, the majority of advocates, advocates and pulmonologists and doctors we all agree, and of course the WHO, we all agree that this is a new threat for the humanity. It's a new challenge to cope. And um, it's the first time when WHO will soon announce the big statement, and you can actually compare this statement as, for example, as pandemia, when the Director General announced pandemia. So some, something similar, they will announce their statement on waves and flavorings that this is the big threat that should be addressed with the laws uh, in the countries to stop it. So that's briefly. Uh, I have a, uh, you know, uh, the journalist uh, is asking uh, many questions for me and um, um, they used to ask, uh, how do you perceive as waves uh, the new product, the new tobacco product? Uh, and I have short respond. I saying, I'm saying that this is the ideal form of suicide. So for those, if you want to really quickly kill yourself, you just do vaping and you can die in two years. Uh, compared to cigarettes, you kill yourself with 20 years or maybe 15 years, but with vapes, you kill yourself very quickly. And um, in May, we have a big round table with um, religious organization and uh, the Muslim uh, organization, big organization in my country, the senior, they say that it's this haram the consumption of vapes is haram. Uh, for uh, Christian Protestant, they confirmed that uh, vaping is, uh, vaping uh, consumption, tobacco consumption and alcohol is the form of suicide of people. And um, Orthodox people actually agree with that. So 
Uh, that's briefly. <laughs> I'm sorry if I, if I took uh, a long time. Um, I'm ready to have questions. I hope I was not very boring to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jamila. And uh, that's an amazing presentation, very, very comprehensive, and you're really right on the, the front line. So, um, Dr. Jamila, first of all, I, I just wanted to ask you, what, um, what are the agents in, in these new nicotine tools that are the most dangerous in terms of, of causing these uh, deaths earlier than we're even seeing in, in, um, in tobacco smoking? Because a lot of people will say, well, you know, vapes and other new nicotine tools may have nicotine, but they don't have the dangerous elements of, of cigarettes, you know, the, the tar and so on, which damages. So, so what are what are the specific agents in these new nicotine tools, which in your view are the most dangerous in terms of you know taking life and uh, causing these? Well, first of all, it's the nicotine, the liquid form of the nicotine which digests in the mouth and go in directly to brain. The second, I would say that um, the glycerin and uh, propylene glycol, I don't know how to say in English the same or not. They are liquid, uh, the oil-based form, which actually inside they have a lot of flavorings, a lot of um, uh, cancerogenic, uh, pro-cancerogenic agents that when they heat in, they are mixed in with each other in different formulas in the big mixture. You don't even, you can't even predict but glycerin and polypropylene glycol is the oil which is coming to the lungs. And our they are ruined. And this oil, I would say that it's uh, not cold, it's heated oil. So mm -hmm. it's warm oil. Can you imagine the warm oil with nicotine, with uh, toxicants, which are uh, interacting between, between other, coming to the lungs and they are, making burn, they're burning the, the alveoles and uh, uh, they're burning the alveoles and they like well, put oil, it's like everywhere. And they make uh, the lungs, uh, um, it's like small lakes of oil, small oily lakes on the bottom of the lungs. So the structure itself is uh, very dangerous, it's very damaging. Also the pulmonologists, uh, American pul pul pulmonologists saying that uh, acetate of vitamin E is, uh, which is actually was found in every, every wave is very damaging to the structure of the lung. So these are, I would say that the whole, uh, the every ingredient, the flavorings, which accelerate the taste, which make it more attractive. By the way, China, they ban selling vapes with flavorings in China. They only sell vapes with uh, tobacco and nicotine, not with flavorings like mango, like passion fruit, only with tobacco, but it's not possible to uh, vape tobacco vapes. It's very, very ugly taste. But they produce a lot of vapes with flavorings to Mongolia, to Kazakhstan, to Russia, to the rest of the world. And these flavorings, uh, what was presented in June, they accelerate the taste. They even accelerate the interaction between the chemicals which are inside. But I would say that the structure itself was glycerin, was glycerin polypropylene glucose and the acetate of vitamin E are also very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you've faced a lot of opposition in, in the work that you've been doing to change the law in Kazakhstan. Where, yes. where has that uh, opposition come from? Oh. Uh, from, uh, you know, the Goliaths, uh, sometimes they're obvious and sometimes they're hidden Goliaths. The obvious Goliaths are the vaping industry. For those who are uh, importing vapes, uh, most of them are smuggled. 92% of our market is smuggled with vapes, so they're smugglers, very aggressive uh, people. Uh, 
usually young people um, before the age of 40, they are uh, business oriented. They don't care about uh, kids. So obvious Goliath is the vaping industry. There is a front group of vaping and tobacco industry. There's a classical, there are seven to eight uh, NGOs, um, even with uh, one NGO with uh, health people inside, with doctors in the past. So they are trying to position this product as harm reduction, mm. as harm reduction product. Uh, uh, there are a few NGOs is ecological NGOs. That's paradox. I'm saying how you're, you should aware about they call it ecological disaster of the vapes, which disposable vapes, which are throwing every day millions and millions of uh, these devices. But you are saying that the bad ear is much more harmful than vaping. This kind of uh, arguments, also uh, strange arguments of the uh, front group saying that the bands are not working, that they are not effective. Uh, these are obvious goliaths. And we have hidden goliaths inside the government, uh, like Minister of Justice recently uh, opponed uh, to this initiative, like Ministry of Economy uh, also opponed it. Um, but, um, you know, uh, their, their arguments are so weak compared to the arguments that uh, we have. And uh, uh, when they ask questions, for example, how many cases of Avali happened in Kazakhstan? So, and I'm saying, you are so cynical, you are so evil, you don't even understand what the question you're asking. You're asking how many children are doomed to die in two years because they have Avali, because their lungs are suffering. So we have all variety of the lives in my country, um, you know, and I'm, sometimes I'm so overwhelmed with the arguments they have and I, I really want to cry uh, because they don't care at all. They didn't care about people, they didn't care about health, they didn't care about reputation, they didn't care about environment, they just don't care. The only care is the commercial business uh, because there is at least $6 uh, per one device. They have pure profit from $6 and more. That's the only they care. Now, often the argument that we hear is that is that vaping uh, is less harmful than smoke, tobacco smoking and that, and that uh, vaping is a way of getting people off tobacco into what's a, a much less harmful form of addiction. So how would how would you, I mean, I know you've said a lot in your talk already, but how would you specifically address that objection? Well, we're, we're, hearing, we're hearing it also from some members of the medical profession, as you've said. We addressed it with two uh, key um, arguments. The first argument, the level of nicotine in every vape. So we ran the survey with the Ministry of Health showing that 67.6 milligram of nicotine uh, found in one uh, device. So the variety is uh, from 10 to 67 and for one cigarette is 1.2. So it's a very simple arithmetics saying that uh, one device is 70 times more addictive because they have 70 times more nicotine than one cigarette, so this is the first. And the second uh, data is saying that the most who vapes is, begin, is beginning to be dual user, is they are doing vapes and cigarettes, vapes and shisha. And there are already many cases in Kazakhstan and there is data a lot in PubMed from um, uh, international experience from United States, from uh, South Korea, from Japan, when the dual use of tobacco and nicotine product is normal. So, and we're saying that uh, there is no, absolutely no uh, reliable data saying that vaping is helping to quit. No, vaping is accelerating the nicotine addiction is increasing the level of the need for nicotine inside brain. Mm. So, 
So these now, two arguments, uh, which... Yeah, no, thank you. And I know you're working very hard to, to try and bring in restrictions on vaping, as you've already very successfully done with, with cigarettes. What do you say to the people who, who say, well, if you make vaping illegal, uh, children and others will just turn to more dangerous narcotics? Is, is there any evidence for that, for that claim, and how would you counter it? You mean the illegal vapes? I, I didn't fully understand your question. So, so the question is, if you make vapes illegal, then children and other adult and adults will simply go to more dangerous drugs. And so it's better to have legal vaping so it stops people going to more dangerous drugs. It's often an, ex uh, an argument you hear. Uh, how would you respond to that? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, there is no data saying that, uh, no scientific evidence uh, saying that. It's just a stereotype. It's a myth that produced by the tobacco industry. He, uh, we used to say that um, we have good example of uh, working good ban in my country. It's a ban of snuff, the smokeless tobacco, which is not accessible uh, to children. Only 2% uh, from Soviet to Soviet, we can see that only 2% of uh, adults are consuming the uh, NASVAI, not SNAF, but NAS NASVAI. So the ban of SNAF in my country is very successful. So we apply this experience to ban the vapes in order to make it successful. And obviously it will be much more big, uh, uh, I would say, it's a, it's a more effective approach to eliminate this product from the market. Mm. Even they sell it um, on the table, it still will be a big, big impact to the less accessibility of, of the product. As I show from the photo, the vaping gadgets, they are selling every product shop. Mm. Every product shop. And um, uh, not just the ban, we have to imply the uh, prosecution for that. Either high penalties or like in Hong Kong, they have the juridical, uh, the, uh, the general prosecution. Uh, they can put uh, the seller to jail after two, uh, two attempts. But I don't know how su successful this experience or not, but I would say this is the only approach we can, we can run yeah. in this current epidemic. And I was, I was going to ask you about that question of, of what, what is the most effective legislation uh, for cutting down, uh, forgetting about vapes just currently, but, but for stopping tobacco consumption? You've been very successful in, in, uh, in Kazakhstan. You've won awards for this. But if you're seeking to change the law, what, what kind of laws are best? to best protect vulnerable people from being exploited and, and hurt? Well, and first, first of all, Dr. Peter, thank you that you have good compliments, but uh, we are far, far away of being successful on tobacco. We're just on the way. Uh, I would say the best example for us is Singapore. Uh -huh. Singapore, is uh, the babies just appeared on the market and Singapore banned it. No impact, no sale, no export, nothing, banned. So uh, this product is not coming uh, to the country. I think Singapore is the best on that. Uh, um, and they know when to have high penalties and even uh, uh, big, I would say, uh, penalty for this kind of uh, um, illegal product. Um, Australia is very good, actually. Australia is a, is a good champion to fight tobacco days. They um, have good trends of lowering uh, the cigarette consumption for the last uh, 20 years. They have plain packaging. Uh, they have high taxes. They have high price for the cigarettes. Uh, uh, they even want. They even stopped to sell cigarettes uh, to the children younger than that. Younger than. Um, were born in uh, 2090. So mm. if you above of this uh, to 1990, sorry, 1990, if you're older of this 
uh, age, you can be sold the cigarette. But if you are younger, no one can sell you cigarette. Uh, for example, with with vapes, they have approach that it's they sell it only in drug store. Uh, but I don't agree with this approach. Uh, I would say personally. And then uh, this is perhaps our, our final question because we're running out of time. But uh, Shari yes. Falkenheimer is asking: Is there a way in Kazakhstan to get the information you've presented out to the lay public, to parents, to school children? Uh, sure. in, in media, through commercial, social media, and so on. And uh, have have you tried this? And and how effective has it has it been in terms of getting? Well, um, yeah, we're trying. We're doing our best. We don't have money to pay for media. We don't have money to pay for bloggers for social media. We just provide information on Facebook, on Instagram. So uh, it's. Um, it's not our responsibility to run for media, to ask and beg to publish it. Uh, where uh, my NGO is focusing on the law, we were quite successful in persuading the politicians to support our ban based on the arguments that I had just recently presented to you. And we have more arguments for politicians, for example, for smuggled market, for the tricks of the industry, for people who really doing very uh, high tricks uh, to avoid. Um, so we are quite successful. That's why we have support uh, from president administration, from the Ministry of Health, from government, from member of the parliament. And I do hope and please pray so that by the end of this year, this law will be um, implemented. And uh, I'm also insisting as advocate to have a general prosecution for the sale, for the, you know, for business around uh, vape so that these people, they know that they sell bad, very um, damaging product. They should be uh, really highly penalized at least, or they should sit maybe five days in prison, for example. But I don't know how it will go. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Your your campaigns and your work have been inspirational. And the testimony to that is how effective you've been in getting decision makers on board. And, and of course, not just nationally, not just MPs and politicians and the president, but also in terms of change legislation and the international recognition that you've had as providing a best practice model through the, the WHO. So we, we could spend a lot more time on this and we've just really scraped the surface, but we're so grateful for your making the time for us today and uh, giving giving this talk. And, and we will certainly continue to pray for you in your in your efforts and uh, at the conference that you're at in, in Philippines. So uh, it's a goodbye from all of us. And thanks for coming. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on ICMDA webinars. May the Lord bless you.